Having read the introductory chapter of your textbook, this lecture should be a review of the influential figures who have contributed to the study and theorization of death and dying. You can refer back to Davies for more information about the theories that I'll be presenting here. As scholars increasingly saw quote-unquote society as a proper object of study, they soon pinpointed religion and death as social factors demanding social scientific rather than philosophical or theological analysis. Here we'll discuss some of the influential theorists that have helped illuminate the nature of mortuary ritual as behavior assisting the living through the stress of death, helping to reinform sorry, helping to reform disrupted social networks and reassigning new identities both to the dead and their survivors. From this perspective, we'll see that death studies are rooted in what is called structural functionalism, which provides a framework for building theory that sees society as a complex system whose parts work together to promote solidarity and stability. In other words, how does death maintain the social structure? Emile Durkheim was a French sociologist who, with Karl Karl Marx and Max Weber formally established the academic discipline of sociology. He was heavily concerned with what's called social cohesion, which was achieved through the interpretation of a given society's constituent elements, that is, its norms, customs, and institutions, similar to the way our organs must function together to keep us alive. In 1897, he published the influential book Le Suicide, which, consisting of a detail, which consisted of a detailed study of suicide that changed the way that sociological research was done. He emphasized the use of scientific methods in the study of human behavior and argued that suicide did not have a physiological or psychological origin. Instead, he created a normative theory of suicide focusing on the conditions of group life that allowed him to define four different types of suicide. We'll return to this concept later in the semester. When, he come, when it comes to death studies more generally, he disagreed with the idea that religions originated from fears of death. Instead, he saw death as a contradiction to social cohesion because it represented the removal of humans from this social structure. From his perspective, mortuary rituals were positive because they shared the feelings of the few that knew the deceased with everyone involved in society so that they could all achieve greater social solidarity. Robert Hertz was another French sociologist who worked under Durkheim and with Marcel Moss while studying the sociology of religion among Indonesian cultures. Despite having died in World War I, Hertz wrote a classic anthropological essay as a response to the question of why individuals throughout space and time fear the corpse. In it, he interprets death as a two-phase process. The first affected the dead body shortly after death, and the second the remains of that body at some later date. The first set of rites dealt with the corruptible flesh, with what Hertz calls the wet medium of the body. The second set of rites dealt with the bony remains or ashes and constituted the dry medium of the body. He goes on to make three important arguments regarding the soul, the corpse, and the mourners of the deceased that can explain variable aspects of mortuary rituals. We'll return to, this, to his essay in a few weeks, so we'll get into the details of his arguments then. Finally, Hertz was also an early proponent of embodiment, a concept that views the human body as a vehicle that enshrines and expresses social values. Your textbook provides more explanation on this topic. Davies goes on to discuss the concept of embodiment as it relates to identity. That is, the personal sense of who you are and what makes you that way, which includes our beliefs, values, and bodily self-awareness, and is shaped by our relationships with others. When dealing with death, it is obvious why this can cause us to question our identity. Davies discusses two perspectives on this. The first, from Bronislaw Malinowski, who opposed the way Durkheim tended to ignore individual emotional experience. As an ethnographer living among the Trobrian Islanders, Malinowski saw how deeply affected these people were by death. He saw funerary rites as a means of helping individuals through the period of their distress, as well as expressing the social loss of a member of society, which is more impactful within smaller communities. To him, religion helped people choose and emphasize the sense of death in life, rather than the sense of fear caused by death. The other perspective comes from Zygmunt Bauman, who sees death as such a profound problem that it may swamp human beings um, and their will to live. 
For him, social institutions actively hide the reality of death by giving the impression that it's under control and minimizing its impact. In this way, death ritual serves the purpose of removing the dead from the world of a living so as to enable the survivors to move on as soon as possible. Arnold van Gennep was a Dutch-German-French anthropologist and the founder of folk folklore studies in France. In his book, The Rites of Passage, he identified common themes across cultures in rituals associated with transitions from one state to another. While this is a term that has since seeped into popular culture, it was new at the time. Chances are that you have participated in or been witness to a transitory ritual in your own life. What he found is that these rituals have a common tripartite structure that consists of separation from the old status, a period of transition to help in learning aspects of the new identity, and finally, a reincorporation into the new status. In this traditional sense, high levels of face-to-face -face contact are required among participants, otherwise people aren't able to recognize this transition. These ritual stages can be used to consider the process of dying or the process of funerary, funerary rites. As Davies recommends, when applying these terms to death rites, we need to be careful about how we're using them. For example, the main focus for the bereaved relative may be separation from the dead, while for the dead person, the main ritual emphasis may be on reincorporation into the society of the ancestors or of the heavenly community. If we focus on funerary rites, then separation occurs at the time of death. The state of transition includes all parties through either the preparation of the dead or the state of mind for the living. Finally, reincorporation into society for the deceased in a state of death or for the living it involves carrying on without the dead. Your activity for this module is to answer the following by submitting your answer through Canvas. Okay, there we go. Can you think of a contemporary example of a rite of passage? I want you to describe such an example by applying this tripartite structure as it is explained here and in your textbook. Be as specific as you can about the actions or feelings involved in each stage of the ritual. Victor Turner was a British cultural or more specifically symbolic anthropologist. Symbolic anthropology is concerned with exploring and defining the in interpre interpenetrating networks of symbols that carried cultural meaning. Human societies are distinguished by their capacity for culture and the recognition of symbols. Turner saw symbols as tools employed by people to reproduce social order, and he was particularly interested in how symbols change or are maintained during transitions of state. For example, a rose takes on different meanings depending on the context within which it is, exists or is presented to someone. Turner elaborated on Van Gennep's idea of the state of liminality, a transitional state that is betwixt and between normal social roles, or what might be called a limbo state. He viewed liminality as a static category rather than an inseparable part of ritual and the process of change. According to Turner, within the liminal phase, one's sense of identity dissolves to some extent, bringing about disorientation, but also the possibility of new perspectives. <clears throat> he also explored the dynamics of what happens to people when thrown together in periods of stress and change, change of identity. He developed the concept of communitas to describe the bonding effect that develops among people with a shared experience. For example, in an educational cohort, like the people in this class, or survivors uh, of an accident. The last figure we'll be discussing today is Maurice Bloch, who, whose ideas of rebounding violence and rebounding conquest are seen by Davies as a critique of Van Gennep. Death is a biological fact of life. According to Bloch, world religions and many local traditions often turn this fact on its head, using rituals of initiation that, symbolically, begin with death and proceed into a higher order of life. Although his work focused more on initiation rites, his concepts are extremely useful for interpreting death rituals. 
He agrees with Van Gennep, but thinks that a new existential dimension must be added to rites of passage, because he thinks that through them, individuals gain a sense of having encountered some sort of transcendent power. In this sense, it is as though humanity interrupts the natural process of birth, growth, and death, by replacing it in a symbolic way with the process of ritual death and ritual rebirth. In the Christian tradition, for example, there is a strong belief that because of sin and wickedness, human life ends in death as a natural process. But, because of a divinely initiated salvation, it is now possible for people to become Christians and accordingly to overcome death. In the history of human culture, humans have been active in addressing themselves to the obvious fact of death by asserting that human life transcends death in some way. This reflects something of the tremendous dynamism inherent in human nature, which drives social groups forward with a sense of real optimism and possibility.